Of course, you know why I'm up here. The other two ran off, so it'll be me tonight. Welcome, and thank you for coming out. Um, we're going to make this as painless as possible. We're going to do things a little different tonight. We're going to go and sing a couple songs, but we have no music. So we have no piano, we have no guitar, and I'm not going to try to strum the guitar, but we're going to sing, and we're going to sing uh, uh, this Pyre in the Blood, page 362. And after we sing a song or so, we'll, um, I don't, I guess we'll take up offering, we'll go over some announcements, and then um, we're going to do something just a touch different. We're going to take prayer requests prior to the preaching, prior to speaking, and then and I'll tell you why we're going to do that here in a few when we get into the text of the Word. So, if you would, join me in uh, page 362. I'll do my best to lead you. Uh, just follow along. If not, just go on, take, take over. So, <clears throat> would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory there's wonderful power in the blood. There's power, power, wonderful power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Line two. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe that there's power in the blood? That's why, we're, that's why we're here tonight, isn't it? Because we were saved by grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, so we're going to go ahead and sing line three and four. So, would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood power in the blood sin stains are lost in his life giving flow there's wonderful power in the blood there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there is power power wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. If you like, you can greet each other with a handshake. That's up to you. I ain't going to sing while you do that because I'll probably uh, burn your ears up. But uh, go ahead and shake hands if you want. I'll go ahead and come out and greet. <clears throat> Hello, Vi. How are you? It's Wednesday evening. It's a regular.
Well, we're going to do one more song. Uh, that was kind of painless. Let's go. Uh, oh, how I love Jesus, page 627. We'll just sing a couple lines in this one. <clears throat> Whenever you're there, look up and we'll, we'll go at it. All right. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Line two. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his prayers. The sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Let's sing it all. It tells me what my father hath in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, yield sunshine all the day. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Praise God for that. Woo. <clears throat> Just something about that name, Jesus. Something about that name. I want to go through some announcements real quick. Um, we forgot to mention a few things Sunday evening. Um, of course, we have a few, a few anniversaries coming up. The Kragers uh, on the 18th of June. And then you got Dan and Sue Fennessy on the 26th of June. We had one that just passed, uh, a birthday, Tony. Tony Cooper, he turned 47 on Tuesday, and he got to go eat one of his favorite dinners, and he was telling us all about it out there in the foyer. And uh, Tony, can we sing you happy birthday? Yeah. Let's sing Tony happy birthday. We can make it easy, make it quick if you want. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tony. Happy birthday to you, and many more, Tony, many more. Hopefully we celebrate in heaven this time next year, you know, that'd be nice. Um, we'll go over a few announcements real quick. Of course, the uh, Neighborhood Bible Times sign-up sheet still in the back for uh, Welcome Center. If you're willing to, uh, to be a help, please sign up by July 4th. Uh, Thursday, June 24th, we'll have a widow, a widower lunch. You can meet at the church to ride church van at 11, uh, sorry, 1045 a.m. Or you can just drive and meet up at the Cracker Barrel at 1115 a.m. Of course, nursery workers, uh, your calendar's on the uh, doors back there. If you have any uh, conflicts, schedule, scheduling conflict, please see Miss Misty, and she'll, uh, she'll work with you on that. Of course, Father's Day is coming up this weekend. I think it's Sunday, isn't it? Am I correct? And... Uh, Missionary, the 27th, Missionary Eddie Mills will be preaching both services. Parent meeting uh, will follow the PM service with camp info handed out. Uh, so please be in prayer for uh, Eddie Mills as he...
prepares the messages for us, what God would have him to preach. And uh, July 4th, of course, is pitching after the AM service, uh, followed by afternoon service, right, I think right after the uh, pitch-in. Uh, deacons meeting on the 6th of July. Uh, the 11th is business meeting and the PM service. Uh, the 12th through the 17th is camp week, junior and senior. Uh, July 18th is uh, camp testimonies and the PM service. And uh, 25th through the 30th is uh, neighborhood Bible time. So it's being prayer for all that. Um, we're going to take some prayer requests because I'm going to tell you why. Um, I was talking to Miss Georgie out here, and we was talking about in the book of Exodus about the name of God. And when he told Moses, I am that I am. And like Miss Georgie said, he's everything. He's, he's our all. That's uh, pretty much sums it up when he said, I am that I am. And... Uh, and I want you to think about, I'm going to go into uh, Psalms here in a little bit in chapter 18 and talks about my, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my strength, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. And as you think about these prayer requests, just think how God can do a mighty work. Just think about what God can do uh, in that individual's life, whether it be a cancer, whether it be a job, whether it be pain in the back, in the legs. I know we have some uh, widows here that uh, uh, their, 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 their hip and their back is just really killing them, and it's really a bothersome and burdensome to them. Um, and just think about these kind of requests and just think uh, how God can deliver, like he did the Israelites, how God can keep, how he can keep you in his high tower and his fortress, and just think about what God's done in your life. So um, whoever's first or whoever wants to throw one up there, go ahead. We're taking prayer requests, if you have any. And I know there's probably a lot of unspokens um, in our heart. Yes, Tony, uh, Tim? Uh, I answered the prayer of my niece, Sarah, and asked me to pray for her. She has scan on Monday, got the test back in May, took a tumor across the back side, and finally it's all down now. I need to jump in the pool more and have to jump in the pool more and have to have scan more and more. So if you didn't hear, excuse me, it was an answer to prayer. So far, his niece um, has cancer, and the, and the tumor has actually shrank over half, is what you're saying, roughly half, a little bit over half. So that's a, that's, a, that's a praise God moment right there, you know. Praise the good Lord for what he's doing. And I think of John Stanford there, and uh, where they live now, you know, he had that stage four to where pretty much he was death sentence. And he's still roaming around as healthy as could be. Cancer's still in his body, but it's not growing. It's at a standstill. Um, and I guess it's hard to pray, and I'm going to be honest, it's hard to pray for people with cancers. I, I don't know how to pray to a certain extent for that person besides, you know, heal their body. Um, God, give them comfort. But what I've been praying about for people with cancer is, God, give that chemo the direct path to that, that cancer cell. Don't let that chemo touch anything else in that body but that cancer because that chemo is some bad stuff. So is the radiation. Sometimes that does more damage to the body than the cancer. Uh, the, the, the person gets pretty ill with the chemo, and then they can't fight the cancer. So just, just pray that that chemo would just direct path right to what it's supposed to attack and the radiation as well, and that they'd have the strength to withstand anything else. So that's how I've been kind of praying for people with cancer because I – you know, we often pray for healing. We often pray for comfort. We know God can heal. We know God can reach in there and take that cancer out of the body. We know God can comfort the heart, comfort the soul, comfort the body. Um, so just pray. Just pray for these dear people because I'm telling you, I, mean, I couldn't imagine right now getting a diagnosis that, hey, Joe, we're sorry. Six months, you're going to be dead. In one sense, I'd be praising God for, I'll be going to heaven in six months, but, but 95% of my, my thoughts would be, Lord, why? I got a daughter. I got a wife. You know, I, I want to live. I want to see all this out. I want to see my daughter walk down the aisle. You know, I, I want to hand her over to a man that's going to love her like I love her and really love her more than I can love her and, and that she's going to take care of her. I want to see her graduate. So, let's pray. 
But anyway, so, so that was an answer to prayer for Brother Tim. And I know um, Brenda had a, a little bit of a, a good news today. So her daughter Joyce had a second round of chemo, and she's doing pretty good with it. It's not really, I know it cakes a few, but, you know, God can keep the body from being sick from the chemo. Remember Tom Clark? Yeah, Tom Clark's knee. And then pray for Carolyn Burkett. And Carolyn Burkett, because her, 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 her yeah, it's just unreal, yes. And, you know, for her age and her faithfulness, it just amazes me. And it ought to amaze you that she's still carries a little Bible and walks into this church and sits right up here and listens to the preaching of God. And she tries to be here every time the doors are open. So pray for Miss Carolyn Burke that she still has the strength to, just to get to enjoy the things of life that God's given her. 91 years old. Praise the Lord. Miss Georgiana. Janine. Janine, I'm not even going to attempt to spell that, but I'll, I'll write it down how I think it should be spelled. If you didn't hear that, Janine is Susie Crumb's sister. She's in the hospital with COVID. Now, have they vented her or anything? Do you know? Or Yeah, I just had a good buddy from work. Uh, he just got out of the hospital with COVID. He's doing pretty good, but it, it wiped him out. Um, Okay. 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 Anything else? Ms. Vi? Amen. That's right. They're the next generation, aren't they? To carry the torch, if you will, to carry the word of God. Yeah, you're right. She said, saved, yep, mm -hmm. yep. If one soul gets saved, it's worth it. It's worth having, some, having Bible time here. Uh, Ms. Vibe mentioned just pray for our church, our preacher, our deacons, uh, the workers, uh, the members, the children that come. Uh, pray for Bible time. Pray for the camps and all that good, good stuff because, like she said, that's the next generation that's going to be carrying the word of God with them. That's going to be, uh, well, now it is. You get out in the world, you get, you get to your job, you get to school, and it just, the devil likes to come and take away the word of God. So, um, I, you know, I, and I'm going to try to be quick here, but I was listening to some good preaching. I, I listen to a lot of preaching when I'm driving around for work. I like to listen to old Jack Hiles and um, uh, Wally Davis and uh, Lester Roloff and Tony Hudson, Curtis Hudson, people like that. And, they, you know, they, they talk about, you know, um, public schools quite often and how they're just a breeding ground uh, for anti-God and how you take a young child and, uh, that comes to church and hears the word of God he or she hears the word of God, but they go back to the public school. Within a couple months, they're no longer here. Um, they're with their buddies. Uh, they've been taught that we're just a bunch of brainwashers. We're pushing what we believe down your throat. Don't listen to them. In all sense, they're doing that to our children. Um, and I ain't saying nothing bad about public school. My daughter goes to one. Um, I try to be careful, but they are a breeding ground for that kind of stuff. Um, we just got to be vigilant and we got to be discerning. Uh, anything else? Anybody, any, anybody, anybody? All right, so I want to go ahead and open us in prayer real quick. Uh, we, I don't know if we really, do we need to take up offering, Brother Gary, you think, or just let that slide? And if you want to give, uh, I guess I can run the plate down real quick. If you want to give, you can. If not, don't worry about it. Um, unless you just want to do it Sunday morning, that's up to you. If you have it planned, let's go. We'll do it. I ain't going to sing why I do it, okay? Let's pray real quick. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, God, that we can be uh, in this building. Uh, God, we pray. God, I especially pray for your power, Lord, to, 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 to speak your words, Lord, without hesitation, without mincing words, without adding or taking away. 
Father, I need your power tonight, Lord. And Father, I pray that it be a blessing to these dear people. Father, we thank you for the giver. The, we thank you for the, uh, the gift as well. We just pray that you bless each and every one of them. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anybody, anybody? Good, good, good. So if you will, you can open your Bible to the book of Exodus, unless we've got any more prayer requests. If we do, we'll, we'll keep taking them. That's what really we're here for on Wednesday nights is a prayer meeting. Sometimes we need to be reminded who God is. Um, and I'm speaking mainly for myself. Uh, sometimes we call on him just when we really, really need him, and we really want an answer really, really quick. And uh, then we put him back on the shelf, if you will. And then we call upon him again when we need him. So <clears throat> in your Bible, in, in, in Exodus, we're going to bounce around a little bit, but I'm going to make it quick. So uh, I don't want to keep you here any longer than what needed to be. Um, a lot of good preachers say, uh, if I can't get, it, get in 20 minutes, what I need to get in, then I, I, I don't need to be up here. But that's not me. So it ain't going to be just 20 minutes. It might be a couple hours. So Exodus chapter 3, verses, really the text is in uh, verse 14, but we're going to start out in verse, uh, verse 13. So Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said in verse 14, Moses, I am that I am. I often wondered, why would God say I am that I am? Um, that's a pretty powerful name. Um, I am that I am. You know, and like me and Georgie was talking, he's everything. He should be everything to us. Um, and he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent, sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel. And so here it is. I am the Lord, pretty much God of your fathers. I am the Lord God of Abraham, the Lord God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. You see, God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he was reminding Moses that I made that I am the God of your fathers, the God of Jacob, the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I made the covenant with these men, and I'm not going to break that covenant. And tonight, we're going to, and we all know the story, how that all came about. Uh, we're going to flip over to um, Psalm chapter 18, verse 2. And we're going to look at some of the things that King David, when he was running from Saul, uh, talking to the Lord, some things he said about his God, which is our God. And I want you just to think about the, this one word in this whole verse. I think it's said seven times, I believe. And it's my, 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 my. And oftentimes, I forget that he's my God. I forget that I have that rock, that I have that deliverer, that I have that, that horn of my salvation, that I have that fortress, that I have that high tower, that I have all that in this one God that can do anything and everything for me if I just put my faith and trust in this one true God. And if I always look to him, and we're going to get into some, some stories, and we're, we'll go pretty quick, but in, in Psalm chapter 18, verse 2, we'll read this verse. Um, now some of you are already reading it. But it says, the Lord my rock, is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. You know, you can say, what is all this saying? What, King David, I mean, when I'm thinking of who God is and I'm thinking of all the things he's done for me, I don't think of these kind of words. I think of the Almighty, I think of the God of heaven, I do think of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but I don't think of, I, I know Christ is the rock, but that don't typically come into my mind. 
when I'm thinking of who God truly is. And as I was reading, I am that I am, then I flipped over to Psalm chapter 18, verse 2. I was like, well, here it is. I am the rock. I am the fortress. I am the deliverer. I am the strength. I am the buckler. I am the horn of your salvation. I am salvation. I am the high tower, your high tower. And so we're going to go through, we're going to kind of lay out a few things. As I was doing some study, we're going to talk about the rock, the fortress, uh, the deliverer, and, and so on, so on. So the rock. We know who the rock is. We know that the rock is unmovable, unchangeable. The rock has withstood, can withstand time. And I love going to the Smoky Mountains. That used to be one of our favorite places to go. And, I, and, we, and we used to go up to the mountains. We would, we'd stay down in Gatlinburg, and through the day we'd go up into the mountains. We would go to a place called Cades Cove. Has anybody ever been there? It's a beautiful 11-mile loop, and you see these old structures. And I know some of them they have brought in and redone, but some of them are original structures that sit there. And one place is called Tipton, and I can't, I can't name them all. But I love going into the old churches. I love just going in there. But anyways, where I'm going with this is their, most of their foundations are on rocks. And they've been there for a long, long time, and they've not settled. They've not moved. They've sat there on these rock foundations. We have that around here as well, some old farmhouses. They sit on old rock foundations, and Christ is our foundation. The rock is our foundation. Without a solid foundation, we'll crumble. We'll sink, if you will. And I, I think of the, uh, there's a verse in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4. We're not going to go into all these verses because we'll be flipping forever. There's a lot of verses. But I think of the story of, of the gentleman who built his house upon the rock. And it withstood the storms. Then I think of the person, and that's in Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse 24 through 27. But the person who didn't build his house upon the rock, we all know the story. When the storms came, the rains fell, the house fell in. And that happens sometimes, even as a Christian, we tend to crumble at times because we forget who the rock is. And we take ourselves off that foundation and put ourselves over here and go out of it ourselves, and we forget who Christ truly is. And I just want to remind us today who I am that I am is. And we all know, I mean, like Pastor says, we're preaching to the choir here. We're speaking to a bunch of people that have probably know more about the Bible than I'll ever even think about knowing. But sometimes I think we need to be reminded who God is with all of our elements, with all of our sicknesses, with people we know that have cancer, uh, loved ones that aren't saved. Um, I was listening to a sermon today by Jack Hiles, and it talked about how how he said, let God be God. Let God be God. And that's talking about, let God do what God does. Quit holding God back. Remember what God did with the Israelites. He freed them from Egypt. He took, I don't know how many people, they speculate. I'm not going to speculate. We could speculate all night. But they took hundreds of thousands of people out of Egypt and walked them through a dry ocean. How does that even work? Scientists try to disprove it. You can't disprove it. That same God that parted the sea, that same God that, that landed in a pillar of smoke and a pillar of fire by night, that same God that brought the ten plagues upon the Egyptians but protected the Israelites in, that, in the Egypt is the same God we serve today. Now, I believe, do I often put it to use, I believe that God can still do what he did then, he can still do today. But oftentimes, we hold God in this Bible and that's it. We say, well, God don't do that no more. We got his word. We got his living word. That is true. But God can still do miracles today that he did back then. Now, is God going to part the Red Sea? I highly doubt it. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to hold God's power back. I don't want to say that God can't heal somebody, that God can't reach into a soul and save that soul. He saved me. Praise God. I was a vow. I grew up in a Baptist church, Temple Baptist out of Kokomo, I knew right from wrong from a young age. I knew who God was. I knew who Jesus was. But when my parents, and when we got taken out of the church and put into a private, I mean, a public school, we went wild. And I'm talking wild. We seen things that was like walking into Vegas. You've seen all kinds of things that just was 
appealing to the eyes and to the flesh. I lived in that hog squire of my own doings for probably 10 to 15 years. And I finally realized who my father was. You know, God says, I will call them and they will know my voice. And he also says, tramp a child the way she goes, and when he grows old, he'll not depart from it. That same God that saved me can save the most vilest person in the world because I was there. Now, I didn't go out and murder nobody. I didn't go out and, and rape, pillage, and plunder, if you will. But I did some wicked things. And I'm telling you, if he can save me, he can save the next person. But oftentimes, like I said, I keep him in this book. I keep him in the Bible because I don't go out and I don't knock on doors. I don't tell my coworkers most of the time that if they was to die today, they could go to hell. You know, I, I just, I hold back his power. You know, and oftentimes, and I've, and I've heard this, and sometimes it discourages you. I've heard that we've been around the whole town and nobody's responding. We've knocked on every door, and I'm not saying that Today, I'm saying years ago, what about Jericho? They marched around that city six times. And on the seventh time, they knocked on that door. The walls come tumbling down. And I'm just saying, God, if he can do that, he can save a soul today. And we've seen some fruit of our preachers and our laymen and ladies going out knocking on doors. We've seen some new people come in. We've seen some souls saved. Maybe they're not here today, but we've seen souls saved. And just imagine, if we, if we think what God can do, the rock, that just imagine if we all realize that God is the God of yesterday, God is the God of today, and God is the God of tomorrow, what he could do in our lives, what he could do around us, in us, through us, whatever. It's hard, though. I get it. It is, it is, it is hard. On Saturday mornings when they go out and knock on doors, I'm out with the animals. It's no excuse. I'm just saying it's easier to be in there dealing with a, a dumb goat or a dumb sheep than it is to be out knocking on the door and trying to tell somebody about Christ. To me, that's the flesh speaking. But we're going to go on because we can, we can stay on that subject for a long time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, you know, we talked about, Paul was talking about the spiritual drink from the rock, uh, the water. That rock is Christ. And we know this. That rock is Christ. And we're going to go on to the fortress. The fortress is a strong place. When you think of fortress, I know most of us think, I know what I think of, I think of Fort Knox. I think of an impenetrable fortress that cannot be penetrated uh, by, by, by me or by somebody else. I think Fort Knox, I think I was reading up on just a little bit, they have, they have walls of limestone, they have walls of steel, walls of concrete, and it's very hard to get in there to get to the gold. I then also think of a place called, it's called Cheyenne Mountain Complex, and they build it in the Colorado Rocky Mountains, I believe it is, and it's where they used to have the, the NORAD, and I think they opened that back up, but now they call it the Space Force, where they house a lot of technology in this bunker and they say that this bunker has I can't remember how thick the doors are I'm not going to get into all that but these doors are thick and it's encased in the mountain like 16, 17, 1800 feet mountain walls around this place so it's almost impenetrable almost our God is impenetrable if you get in the fortress of God nothing can harm you and I'm not saying you're not going to get a disease. I'm not saying you're not going to get hurt. I'm not saying you're, you're not going to lose your job or, or you're not going to lose your house or, or something like that. But we can rest assured that if we're in the fortress of God, it doesn't matter what happens. We're safe. And it's easy. And I, I know it's easy to sit here and talk about this. But I guess that's where I struggle because I think it ought to be easy to talk about it, but it ought to be easy to believe it. It ought to really be easy to know that this same God that did what he did then can do what he, he can still do that today. Then, you know, in that fortress, in God's fortress, in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 28 through 29, 
talks when Christ says, no man, no man can pluck you from my Father's hands. Once you're in God's fortress, once you're saved by the blood of the Lamb, once you've been redeemed, no man can pluck you away. That ought to just throw a smile on my face from here to the sun and never look back, no matter what happens. Because I know no matter what happens in my possibly 46 to 80 years of life, that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. That ought to just make us chat with joy. But we often think about what's going on in our life. And folks, believe me, this is where I struggle at times. We get to the, the deliverer. He's my deliverer. You know, he delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. He delivered Daniel out of the lion's den. He delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace. And we all know that's a picture of Christ saving us from the pits of hell. I often wonder about that picture. And I think the men that threw them into the furnace fell down and were burned up. How did they even get them in there? If they were that close to burn up, how could they even shove them in there? Were they shoved in there? I don't know. But I tell you what, no matter what happened, they believed that God was going to redeem them, that God was going to save them, that God was going to deliver them out of that fiery furnace. And he did. Do you believe that you can be delivered from a fiery furnace today, from a circumstance in your life? And I always love the part where when Nebuchadnezzar says, I see four men loose. The fourth has appearance like the Son of God. It's Christ walking in that fiery furnace. It just... And you know, here I am. I get to speak on this. Praise God. And then we go on to strength. When I think about strength in the Bible, my first thought is to go to Samson. We all know that Samson... It's Nazarene. We all know that Samson, the Holy Spirit come and went from Samson. He would come upon him, then he would leave. But Samson would, would cry. I'm going to read Judges chapter 16, verse 28. So we'll go ahead and turn there. Judges chapter 16, verse 28. And oftentimes, this is where we, uh, we forget about who God is. So Sam, Sam, uh, sorry, Judges chapter 16, verse 28. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. Strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be avenged, or may be at once avenged of the Philistines from my two eyes. And then it goes on, that, you know, later on in, in the book, and it talks about how Samson... Of course, pride overruled him, and he let Delilah, pretty much, he, he told her his secret. And she bound him, cut his hair off, blah, 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 we all know the story. Samson cried out one more time, God, let me be avenged. And then I think of King David. I think of King David, where King David... When he went to the battle, but before he went to battle, he was being prepped. He was already anointed king, and he was a shepherd, a shepherd over the sheep of his father. It's a picture of Christ. And a bear and a lion come, and they try to take, they, they did actually take a sheep, a little lamb, and David slew the bear and he slew the lion. He yanked the sheep out of the mouth. There's no way a man could do that on his own strength. No way. That was the strength of God. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 4, uh, verse, and also verse 34 through 36 and verse 49. Then I think of Goliath. I think of David when he faced this giant. And we all know these stories, but it's often nice to be reminded of these stories because it's not our strength. It's God's strength. I can't, and I forget about that at times. I like to put myself in that strength. I like to put myself as a big bad man. I like to put myself 
that I can get myself out of any position, but I can't. But you know the story? David went to the battlefield, and he said, who, who dare mock the army of the living God? Of course, they were all afraid of this giant. They were all afraid of this battle war, of this man that was just bred for battle, that was, uh, some say, nine, ten feet tall. We don't know. The Bible says three and a half, is it three and a half cubits? Something like that, I can't remember. Is it more than that? Anyways, we know that it's roughly nine to, nine to eleven feet tall. But he wasn't just a scrawny man. He was a battled man. He was a man that has been to war. He was a man that probably looked like something you see on WWF or WWE, these big wrestlers, but only much taller. And he faced a child, what we'd consider a child, a teenager. And David picked up one, five stones. Of course, he only used one stone. That's all he needed. He needed a rock. He needed Christ, the rock. He got his strength through God. See, when things happen in our life, we need to turn right to God and say, God, I don't know why I have to face this. I don't know why I have to go through this. But God, I'm going to rely on you for the strength. I'm going to rely on you to, to deliver me. I'm going to rely on you to keep me in your fortress. I'm going to rely on you to put me in the high tower. I'm going to rely on you to be my horn my power. And we go on to the buckler. I, I looked that up because I don't fully know truly what a buckler is, but I believe it's, it's a shield, it's a protector. It, some say it was a spear, but some say it was a fully dressed man that had a shield and a spear ready for war. Uh, I'm going to say shield because God is our shield, the, the, the shield of faith. I'm going to say that that and, and I'm going to read this verse in 1 Peter chapter 5. I think most of you know this verse. Uh, I should have it memorized, but I don't. And I'm not going to try to say it without reading that out of the Bible because I'll butcher it. But 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, <clears throat> it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, uh, the, uh, your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And resist the steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accompanied or accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So I think about the, the whole armor of God. I think about the helmet of salvation. I think about the, uh, the sword, the word of God. I think about the breastplate of righteousness. I, th I think about the, uh, the belt of truth, uh, the, the shod the shoes of the gospel. I think about the shield of faith. And I'm not going to ramble because we've already went over this, but we need to realize that God is our buckler, that God is our shield, that no matter what takes place, he's got us. He's got us right where he wants us as long as we look to him. Now, we can jump out of that and put ourselves where we think we can do whatever we want. And then here we get to the horn. And I, I love this because the horn of my salvation when I was thinking of the horn, I was thinking of the, um, we're talking about the unicorn in the Bible, but I was also thinking of the rhinoceros. Their horn is their power. Their horn is what they destroy things with, what they defend themselves with. But I started thinking of the blood, the horn of my salvation, the blood of Christ. Without the blood, there's no remission of sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of the Lamb. What can make me whole again? You know, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, you know, redemption's through his blood. That's the power of salvation. The sacrificial death of my Savior upon the cross, the shedding of his blood, the burial and the resurrection. The blood of Christ. Are you covered in the blood? And we go on to salvation. It means just what it is, salvation. And then I think of the name of Christ. I think of Jesus. Uh, in, in Acts chapter, uh, and we're going to read this in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. It 
It says, neither is, there any, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And we all know that's talking about Jesus. That's talking about the rock. That's talking about the deliverer. That's talking about the horn. That's talking about the fortress. That's talking about all these names of God. Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. You know, in Christ, Christ, he paid the price for my sin. He shed his blood for me and for you. He shed his blood for the whole world. He purchased the church with his own blood. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28. And then we get to the high tower. I'm just about ready to finish up. We get to the high tower, and I was kind of looking at this, and I was thinking high tower. I'm thinking of a big, tall tower. I'm thinking of something that you would climb in, like uh, you climb up this tower, and nothing could get to you. But I'm thinking, man, they could just bust the bottom out. You fall over, and they kill you. Whatever. I don't know. But I'm thinking of the high tower, and I'm thinking of the arms of God. I'm thinking once I'm in that high tower of God, once I'm in his arms, nothing. No death no sickness, no sorrow, no nothing. If I just put myself in his arms and stay in them arms. You know, I think of, I, I think of the story of, of Peter when he walks on the water. You know, he put himself, when he said, if that be you, Christ, then bid me to walk on the water. Peter's, Peter and Christ said, come. So Peter gets out and walks on the water. We do that. I do that. Like, praise God, I'm walking on water. Nothing's touching me. Then I start looking around at all my troubles. I start looking around at myself in the mirror, at my job, at my family. And I start sinking, and I start getting away from God. And then next thing I know, I see Jesus reaching down and pulling me up, putting me back in his arms because I look to him. But oftentimes I look away because it's me, 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 me. He's my high tower. That's what's in the name of I am that I am. That's what's in the name that says I am hath sent you. That's what's in the name that says I am the Lord your God. That's what's in the name that says I am the rock. I am the deliverer. I am the fortress. I am the horn of thy salvation. I am your salvation. I am all these things to you. Just look to me, no matter what takes place. Look to me. I need to be reminded who God is at times. Probably every day I got to be reminded who God is. So I'm going to leave on this note. And I've already said this. He is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. He is my strength. He is my buckler. He is my salvation. He is my horn. And he is my high tower. What more do I need? I think I need a whole lot of more stuff. But what more do I need besides just what God's name says? That's all I have. I hope I was a blessing to you. I hope that, uh, um, that we can remember who God is because I, I, I need that every day. I need to be reminded in God's word who he is. Uh, any more prayer requests real quick before we close? But then prayer requests that were mentioned and the unspokens that's in our hearts, I know there's probably many. Just remember... In that name, I am. I am the one that can take care of you. I am the one that can reach in and remove the cancer. I am the one that's going to bring you home to heaven to see glory, to see his precious face. I am the one that is the same yesterday, unchangeable, today 
and tomorrow and forever. I am, me and Miss Georgie talked about this, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. There's nothing before and there's nothing after. We have nothing to lose. If you're saved tonight, you have nothing to lose. Sometimes it's hard, though, isn't it? Sometimes this old body just likes to complain and moan, and I'm, I'm right there. Job don't go well, or I'm working too hard. I'm like, man, this is, I'm trying to be thankful. I need to be thankful. And you remember who God is. That being said, if no more prayer requests, I'll close this in prayer. Um, if you want to stick around and pray, the altar's open, the, the pews are open, the church is open as long as you need. If you want to go home and sit on your couch, that's great too, because that's probably where I'm going to go here in a little bit. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, to be reminded of, of, of your name, Lord, and what comes with your name. We're, we're reminded, God, of what you've done uh, with the Israelites, what you uh, can do in our lives, what you have done in our lives, Lord. Oftentimes, God, I need to be taken back on that, um, on that road, God. God, to just allow you to show me what you've done in my life, how, God, you brought me up out of a, a, the Mary Clay, the Mary Clay, the pigsty, how you saved my wretched soul. And, God, I'm so thankful, God, that you've I've done that. You're merciful and long-suffering. Father, we thank you again for your name. We thank you, God, that uh, your promises never fail, your words truth. God, we thank you for your son, Christ, who makes all this possible. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's all I have. Any, anything else? Thank you for coming. I appreciate it.